Praise God. I love the cross. Yes. And I think that every time we get up to preach or to testify, we should refer to that old rugged cross. Yes. The writer said, I will cherish that old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. When we think of what he did on the cross, we can't help but give him praise. Upon the cross, he bore all of us sins. He died and he paid the price so you and I can be where we are today, sons and daughters. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight. God, we lift you up. We give you thanks. We honor your name. There's no God like Jehovah. Father, I surely need you tonight. I surely need you now. Pray, God, that you'll touch me. Let your anointing flow. Oh, God, thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit that is moving in this house yes. tonight. Great God, touch every heart. So when we should come to the end of this service tonight, we can say to ourselves, surely it was good for us to be here. Oh, God, in our hearts, I was bowing up the altar of God and saying in our hearts, there's no God like Jehovah. So now, God, send your Holy Spirit that makes preaching easy, oh God. The anointing that breaks and destroys the yokes. I lead it with strength. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen and Amen. amen. It is Good Friday. Good Friday history is very rich. And I want to share a little bit of the history of what Good Friday is all about tonight. It's more like a uh, teaching session. Amen. Unless the Holy Spirit moves some other way. But I want to share my introduction of and what Good Friday is. I'm pretty sure that you do know as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we go. What is Good Friday? And I'm asking the question. What is Good Friday? And do we call Good Friday good? Question to think about. When it is such a dark and bleak event, commemorating a day of suffering and death for Jesus Christ. For Christians, Good Friday is a crucial day of the year because it celebrates what we believed to be the most momentous weekend in the history of the world. Ever since Jesus died and was raised, Christians have proclaimed the cross and the res resurrection of Jesus Christ to be a decisive turning point for all creation. Paul considered it to be of the first importance that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and was raised to life on the third day. Yeah. All in accordance with what God had promised all along in the scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 3. On Good Friday, we remember the day Jesus willingly suffered and died by crucifixion. As the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. 1 John 1, 10. It is followed by Easter the glorious celebration. Boy, aren't we waiting for Easter? Amen. Of the day of Jesus coming. Praise God. Jesus raised from the dead, hurling, hurling his victory over sin and death and pointing ahead to a future resurrection for all who are united to him by faith, Romans 6, 5. Still, why call the day of Jesus' death Good Friday instead of Bad Friday or something similar? Some Christian traditions do take this approach. In Germany, for example, the day is called Karfotet or Sorrowful Friday. In English, in fact, the origin of the term good is debated. Some believe it is developed from an old name, God's Friday. But regardless of the origin, the name Good Friday is entirely appropriate. Amen. Amen. As terrible as it was, mark the dramatic culmination of God's plan to save his people from their sin. In order for God, for the good news, we have, in order for us to have the good news, to have meaning for us, we must first do a 
understand the bad news of all of us conditions as sinful people under condemnation. The good news of deliverance only makes sense once we see how we are enslaved. Another way of saying this is that it is important to understand and distinguish between law and gospel. In scripture, we need the law to show us all lest our conditions were. Then the gospel of Jesus Christ comes and brings relief and salvation. In the same way, Good Friday is good because as terrible as the day was, it had to happen for us to receive the joy of Easter. The wrath of God against sin had been poured out on Jesus, my God. The perfect sacrifice substitute in order for forgiveness and salvation to be poured out to the nations. Without that awful day of suffering, sorrow, and shed blood of the cross. The cross is where we see the great suffering of God's forgiveness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Righteousness and peace we kiss each other. Mm -hmm. The cross of Jesus is where that occurred. Where God demands his righteousness. Consigned with his mercy, we receive divine forgiveness, mercy, and peace. Because Jesus willingly took our divine punishment. The, re the result of God's righteousness against sin. For the joy set before him, Hebrews 12.2. Jesus endured the cross on Good Friday, knowing it led to his resurrection, mm -hmm. our salvation, and the beginning of God's reign of righteousness and peace. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. One of you is in a hearing tonight a topic. Amen. And it goes like this. Friday is the road to Sunday. Is the road to Sunday. Yes. The Bible said that Peter pulled Jesus aside yes. and he rebuked Jesus and said, Jesus, what is this you are talking about? You can't die. You better change your mind. And I'm paraphrasing this. No, Lord, you, you can't die. What will they think about me, Peter? What will they think about the brothers and the other brethren? You change your mind. And the Bible said Jesus rebuked Peter. Rebuked the spirit that was in Peter. He said, Peter, I told you this many times. What will happen to me? I told you that they will break this temple down but in three days. It will raise the king. You know all these things, Peter. What is your problem? And so he rebuked the spirit that was in Peter. Unlike Peter, I want to share testimony. It is a personal one from my heart tonight. And like Peter, for months when my son got into trouble, for months, 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 I carried this burden. I carried this weight on the inside. I carried this load on the inside. I would drive up to my driveway and sat in my car for 30 minutes. Uh, too sh ashamed, too embarrassed to get out of my car. Why? Because these are the neighbors who saw the van that says Silver Spring Church of God. These are my neighbors who heard me say, God bless you. I am going to church. Now, I was too embarrassed to, for them to see my face. So I sat there and this pain when I can't even heat me up on the inside. I would not want to talk to my son. I would tell my wife I didn't raise a boy to, to be talking to him through cages. I don't I, I didn't want to go see him. I thought it was hard to watch him in chains, chains around his hands, and chains on his feet, and chains around his waist. I said I didn't raise my child that way. Grief and pity and sorrow filled my heart. He finally wrote a letter. And he said, Daddy, if I can only be half the man you are, I will be on my way to good things. He said, do not blame your 
yourself. Do not be yourself. This is not your fault. Where I am right now is not your fault. But I blame you, Sister Marcia. I said, how could you mess up the family name? How could you call some embarrassment like that on the family? What will people say when they see me in church? How oh, will church folks act around me? How about my friends and all it was about me, about me, about me? Just like Peter, selfish. Thinking about myself. But one in the morning, one in the morning, I got on my knees to pray. Could have been about three hours because when I look at the time, to the time I stopped. And I was sorry to have broken uh, and need a word from God. Uh, heavy laden. Uh, and in the middle of the prayer, I could hear the voice of God as clear, clear as a light is showing and shining. It's not about you. It is not about you. I thought it was my wife, so I looked around, but there was no one there except me. It is not about me. Here I am, beating myself up, trying to fix myself so I can look good, so people will not say things, trying to blame this young man. And God says, you are okay where you are. He's at a place where we need God now more than ever. He needs your help. He needs encouragement. He needs your prayer. It's about him, not about you. Yeah. Yeah. I was broken on the inside, Brother Luca. The tears began to flow down my face. I said, God, I repent before you. And that's the thing. That's how Peter was behaving. He knew that God needs to go to the cross. But he was selfish. He would rather please men. Worry about his marriage than how to please God. God's Jesus said, I am going to the cross. I'm going to die for your sin. And he knew that the road leads to Sunday. And Good Friday is the day, hallelujah, that we remember the crucifixion of Jesus. But there's more to it than remembering our job as Christian and preachers and minister is to call people to the cross. The cross must be the center of our joy, the center of our message. The cross is our hope. Yeah. Are you hearing me tonight? No wonder the writer says of the cross, and the cross where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now, are we happy tonight? Are we happy tonight? That love lifted us when nothing else could help. Here comes love. Condemned to die, but here comes love. Lifted us. Friday, the road to Sunday. We want to embrace the resurrection. But Jesus called us to the cross as well. As we embrace the resurrection, he's calling us to the cross. Hallelujah. There's no Easter Sunday without a Good Friday. Amen. So you might as well start from tonight. And that's what, that's what we're doing, oh my God. There is no Easter Sunday without a Good Friday. This, this is what gives us Easter Sunday. This is a day, hallelujah, that he was hung on the cross, my God. They stressed him, stressed him wide. Hallelujah. They dropped him low. It was for you, 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 and me. Somebody said my mother could not bear it. My daddy could not carry the cross. But Jesus carried the cross all the way to Calvary. He went for you. And now you are set free by his grace. He was love that had him on the cross. He was going to nail the head and there. He was a love. Oh, love of God. Oh, rich and pure. Oh, measureless and strong. He shall forever. And the writer says, and I love this, it says, let me put a phrase in this way. If all the water in the world could become ink, and every paper in the world could become parchment paper, a writing paper, it will still not be enough to write the love of God. An angel song when we think of his goodness, when we think of his love, when we think of all he has done for us. The writer said, My soul cries out, Hallelujah, thank God. 
cross. And we can see they are nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear. We put anguish and pain. Jesus went to the cross and he carried your sin. Come on, they're out like we were good with all and sin and shaking and inquiring iniquity. It's because of the love of Jesus. Why you're looking so good tonight? It's because of his love that shines and smiles on you. We are now a brand new person, a brand new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. You are royalty because of the blood of Jesus. It's because of the cross. Somebody show the cross. Friday. The road to Sunday. There is no resurrection without the cross. There is no resurrection without the cross. First Peter 2.24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we've been dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. First Peter 3 18. For Christ also as one suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. Who is the just one? Jesus Christ is the just one. We are rich and poor, born in sin and shame and in iniquity. In sin that a mother conceive us. But God and my son of the world, that he saved his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because of Calvary, because of Christ, because of what he did on the cross, I can sing a new song. It's joy. Jesus came into my heart. He gave me new song. He gave me new walk. I saw you dancing. I saw you jumping. It's because of Calvary. It's because of Jesus. Nothing good you know you have done. Nothing good you have done, Sister Tansa. Oh, but Jesus, he came from glory. Stand in the place of you, man. Hallelujah. This is royalty in glory. Ah, oh, God. So you can take on how God our sins and our trespasses. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, here with me here. I'm just building up my, uh, what do you call it here? Can you find the right word? But it's all right. Romans 5, 6 to 10. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet pre-adventure for a good man. Yeah. Some would even dare to die. But God, somebody said, but God, God. commanded his love towards us. Yeah. In that one you are yet sinner, oh God, Christ died for us. Much more than we now justify by his blood. We shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Aren't you glad you have a place tonight? Yes. Aren't you glad you have a place tonight? Yes. Oh God, this is something to shout out. That Jesus took my pardon. This I surely know. Hallelujah. He took my record and thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. Washed me thoroughly from in, from in within and without. Cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Took his pen and write my name in the last book of life. Call his son. I hear and I join tears with him. Not only that, but he called me a friend. I heard somebody say, I am a He called me friend. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Everyone has a problem with the cross. Everyone has a problem with the cross. The very idea of Good Friday causes us concern. The problem is that both his power and his wisdom 
led him to the cross. A brutal denial of everything he had done before. Those who had seen his power wondered why has he seemed so powerless at his greatest need. Those who saw his intelligence wonder how someone so smart could miscalculate so badly. And let me go back through this one more time. The very idea of Good Friday causes us concern. The problem is that both his power and his wisdom led him to the cross. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. But he died alone for you and for me. Upon the cross, he bowed his head and died and he shouted out, it is finished. Man's redemption is paid. Jesus Christ paid it all with his life, with his blood. Hanging on the cross, he gave it all up for you and I. He could get off easily. He could walk through the crowd. But because of you, because of me, he went to the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. He was the writer says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, oh God, it produces many. Not just his words, his very life is a parable. He lived a life of example so all of us can follow. Oh my God, you want to find life in Christ? We must sacrifice our lives. Die daily. Hallelujah. I live because he lives in me and the life that I live. I live not of myself, but I live a life through Christ Jesus. My God, we must live for him, Pastor. He said, if you lift, it, lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Not some men, sister Samuel, but I will draw all men unto me. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the message we are telling. That is the story we are telling tonight. That Christ has been lifted up, raised up, so everyone can see him. We need to continue to spread the gospel, the good news of salvation. Let the world know that Jesus loves them. This I know. The Bible tells them so. It is the gospel message. That's the message that Jesus preaches. Love, love, love. If any man will come after me, they will deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. No one said it is easy. There's going to be trials and heartaches along the path, obstacles and barriers. But my God says, My grace is sufficient to keep you. He died on the cross so we can make it. We have no reason, Sister Davis, not to make it into heaven when He gave us everything we need. Amen. Thy words have I hid in my heart. Yes. Oh God, my words, a lamp unto your feet and a light to your path. Yes. Oh God, he gave us his words. Hallelujah, so we can walk in newness of life. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you by yourself. You are not alone. Yes, sometimes you feel like you're alone, but in reality, you are not alone. I hear somebody say, I have somebody with me to share my heavy cherish the whole rugged cross with all my trials, with all my troubles, with all my setbacks. I will cherish the whole rugged cross. But one day I will exchange the whole cross for a crown on my head. I'm still working for him. There will be a crown. And the day is coming when you, 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 you and I, we stand before him. This is the everything. Paul said, 
if it was in this life only, I have hope. I would be like them, most miserable. But he said, thank God. Thank God. I have a lively hope in him. I have a heart that one day I shall see him as he is. Oh my God. We're heading on the signs of us that the coming of God is at hand. I do not know when. I do not know how when, but I know that one day the eastern sky will break. And he will say, Jesus, go get my children.
So the earliest believer, the earliest believers call the cross, the wisdom of God, and the power of God. First Corinthians 1, 23 to 24. This is a stumbling block, block for to us, listen, to consider today that both his power and his wisdom led him to the cross. People prefer not to dwell in such things. People don't want to talk about those things. After all, who respects suffering? The question is asking. Yes. When, hallelujah, my God, my God, after all, who respects suffering? He's asking a question here. When was the last time we talk about suffering in the church? Mm. We talk about everything else. Yes. We preach about everything else. Yes. But he suffered in the cross. We are going through some things. We have to go through some things. Hear me tonight. We will go through things. Amen? Yeah. But Jesus said, Lord, I will be with you always. Yeah. You are not alone. He's with you. My God is with you. He's with you. When you feel the load of stress and you're burning down and hard felt the pain, the weight that's weighting you down, look to Jesus. Our faith looks up to him. Yeah. Oh, Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Yeah. Hear us while we pray. Yeah. Take all our sins away. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Here he says, Things are always darkest just before they go pitch black. Yeah. Here. And then, in the blackness of truth, the truth that our own Power, our smarts are never enough. Our smart intellect are never enough. When we are going through those tough times, we need Jesus. In other words, that's what he's saying. We need Jesus. Yes. Philippians 3 10 says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. 2 Timothy 2 12 says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we deny him, Brother Tino, he will deny us. But if we suffer with him, God Almighty, he will reign with us in the name of Jesus. If we suffer for Christ, he will suffer with us. We will find peace. Hallelujah. We will find joy. He will not leave you alone by yourself. If you are suffering, you are not by yourself. We have a mighty God, a great God. Amen. Whatever we are going through, whatever we are going through, He's with you. A few more minutes to go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three. Friday means the beginning of change. Friday means the beginning of change. Hallelujah. Number two. Everyone has a problem with the cross. Number three, Friday means the beginning of change. Why does Friday mean the beginning of change? Because of one man. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who changed the course of our destiny. Yeah. Hallelujah. We were condemned to die. Oh God, like a sheep tossed and driven. We are not purpose, no aim, no intention, no abiding place. We were to and fro tossed here and there. And I'm talking about uh, uh, as far as sin's concerned. We were here, there, and everywhere. But Jesus came and gave us direction. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are possible. Why? Because he died on the cross. Now I have life and I have life more abundantly. And I know, and I know, and I know that he's carrying me through, Sister Mission. So when we are burdened under the Lord, 
my God, when it seems like there is no way out. And everybody go through something. Look to the cross. That's what the cross is there for. To remind us that he already took our load. Oh my God. He took our burden. He took our sins, our pain. He said, take my, my, my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, come, 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 come. All you that are labored and elevated and I will give you rest. Oh! Down. So when we fall down, it's not over. If 
you can pull yourself up by system vision, brush yourself up and say, God, here I am again. It's me, oh God. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. I failed, oh God. I made a mistake. I know where I should be. But oh God, in your loving kindness, will you restore me and forgive me? Wash me one more time, God. Here am I, oh Lord, on the need of prayer. And he will restore. He will pick you up. He will brush you off. He will say, my child, I love you. And he will set you on your journey. So we are on this journey. And Friday is the road to Sunday. Your cross you will carry. Your cross you must carry. It's not a very bed of rules. Somebody says, you have thorns and fiddles that is in the way. But Jesus says, no, I am with you always. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. But I will follow you. I will be with you. Always. Always. Are you ever going to be just broken at the inside? Yeah. You can't pick yourself up, Sister Marshall. You just feel like the weight of everybody weight and load is on your head. You feel so helpless and dry, and you feel like, man, I don't know what's happening around me. But as you begin to go through your moments of pity party and you ask yourself a person, why me, God? Why me? Why is nothing to break through? Why am I going through these things here after here and day after day, months after month? Why me, God? Is there anybody else can take some of this burden off me? You feel you can't share it to your husband or to your wife. You feel there's not a friend you can call. Because everybody tells somebody about something. But in the moment of despair, while you're going through, out of nowhere, you feel like a, a mighty rushing wind of the Holy Spirit, like somebody just embraces you and pulls you up. You feel like you can stand tall, oh my God, like a mighty army. There's nobody around you, but you feel lifted up. You feel picked up, but you can stand up on your feet. That's the time when Jesus comes in and ministers to you. Oh, God is not always on the mountaintop, but in the valley below sometimes, that's where he comes. We are seldom in the valley, but he comes even in the valley. Yes. And in those moments, when the boss don't understand, when the pastor, the first lady don't understand, your children don't even care. Your spouse don't understand, but there is a longing on the inside. There's something, uh, oh my God, Pastor Andrew, that's on the inside. There is a space, there is a vacuum, and you're going to God in prayer. Lord God, I come to you. Oh, here I am, oh God, to worship you. Now, God, he wrapped his arms around you, and he begin to comfort you. Have you ever felt the touch and the hush of the Holy Ghost? There's nobody around you, but you feel like somebody is pampering you. You feel like somebody is firing you. It's all hovering over you. Somebody's nursing you. And you feel like you are strength. And a minute ago, you were down on your knees. But now you're walking with your shoulders bare. Why? Because Jesus said, I live on the inside. I am with you. And I will comfort you. Those moments when you're going through, don't give up. Until you're going to throw the towel in. Oh, God. on. I am alone. He will come through for you. Hallelujah. May the come we see him on here when you want him. But he's always on time. Does the God we serve? An on-time God over here. Yes, he is. An on-time God. May the come. When you want him. That's the problem. Manos take five more minutes. It's a it's a kitchen. If we don't get it now, here and then. It's too long. It's too long. Those hours at least he had on the cross, was that was those hours long for him? As soon as somebody says something and buffet us a little bit, we we ready to pick up our Bibles and say, ain't coming back to this church. I'm gonna find a church that's called Church of the Good Good. <laughs> Tell me where the one is, so I can join that one. <laughs> as soon as the wind of battery begin to blow, we are ready to quit and give it up. God, I'll see you tomorrow. But right now, I'm gonna find Understand, he said, Look to the cross, look to the cross, look to the cross. I'm on the cross. I gave it for you, 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 you. Some of us have things that we can share with share with anybody. It's so personal, it's so deep. But I can tell it to Jesus. Yes. I must tell Jesus, oh God. All of my trials. I can bear. Oh God, these burdens alone. In my distress, you kindly will help me. Jesus will help me. Jesus alone. Jesus is the best 
thing that ever happened to you, 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 and me. Come on, lift your hands and give him praises. Some people just want to be around part time. They'll be a good buddy for a long a little while yes. until they're tired. Oh, yeah. But here is Jesus, all the way to Calvary. He went for us. All the way to Calvary. He went for us. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. So the road Jesus traveled is the road for all of us. Be crucified? Have you never been crucified? Mm -hmm. yeah. no, yeah. People treat you. Mm -hmm. False witnesses. That's what they're doing. They're crucifying you. Mm -hmm. Abuse you. Tell lies. Take your stories. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Falsely. Was that the same thing they did to Jesus? Yes. All the stories they made up. Mm -hmm. Lies and even more Canadian. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he stayed, the course. And he went to the cross. Jesus demonstrated faith over circumstances. Can we demonstrate our faith over circumstances? There will always be circumstances. Things come our way. Sometimes we kind of put ourselves in some position and bring some things at ourselves. It's not always the enemy. Sometimes we do a little bit of something to ourselves. Cry about that. Come on, let's talk. <laughs> you know, we put ourselves in that position. But Jesus, brother said, demonstrate faith over circumstances. So when those circumstances arise, will you lift your faith to Jesus Christ? They will come. Troubles will come. It's not an if or may. Let me tell you something. If he can't find, if he can't work for you, first lady, you're strong, and you sister up here, and you sister Marshall, and he finds somebody that is close to you and work through that person. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not making this one up. This is true. Yeah, he yeah. will find somebody <laughs> that's associated to you, Brother Kenny, and work through this per that person. And that's why the most, they, uh, was Paul and David said, if it was my friend, if it was my enemy who have done me this evil, mm -hmm. I could understand. But it's my own familiar friend. It's somebody who's close to you. And the devil will use any avenue system to get to you. You will leave here inside the morning feeling high in the Lord and get to work on Monday morning and you feel like you want to take up your best and throw it at him. But when you remember the cross, you can't beat that thing up. You got to say the cross that keeps me humble. And people, we want to make you say things. But when you remember the cross and you tell me some story as a supervisor they run your heart sometimes but when you remember the cross you have to stay up let me tell you something salvation salvation worth it all and the road to Calvary the road to heaven it takes a lot of work I'm telling you it's going to take dedication persistency and a lot of work we have to be so careful Sometimes it's not the things that we call big. There's no bigger little sins. But sometimes some people hold some, can categorize some things and say this one is a big one and this one is a little bitty one. But Solomon says, watch the facts that God divine. Sometimes it's the little things that eats, or, eats the vine, that eats the vine. Sometimes we have to cut off those vines. Burn it, man. And say, so can spring forth fresh sprout. Cut off the old sprout. The thing is not growing. Trim it down. Put some fertilizer here. Give it some water and continue to move on. Sometimes that's what we have to do in our lives. Burn it, trim it, cut it, and continue to move on. The cross that makes the difference. 
So faith over circumstances that is very good, that is very powerful, that means you're lifting your faith about your circumstances because they will come. They will come. But Jesus demonstrated that. On the cross, all the pressure he faced, all the whipping for the marshal, all the lashing, oh God, they talk about it. About him, crowned a thorn. He was first, they gave him some of vinegar to drink, and all these things they mocked him to his garment, but he never ever said a mother's word. He carried the cross to cover him. Let you go home. Christ laid on the cross. Those who turn to him are delivered. From both the penalty and the power of sin. Keeping the cross of Christ central will protect us from the many winds of false doctrines. Blowing in our day, Satan hates the cross because it sealed his tool. He doesn't like the cross. The writer said, it sealed his tool. So the devil hates the cross. What do you think? He fights us so hard. We think we have such a hard time. It's because we believe in the cross, the finished work that God, Christ did on the cross. He sealed the enemy and sealed his doom. Hear this. So he hit the cross because he sealed his doom. And he is relentless in his attacks. To undermine I'm going to let you go home. The cross. So the cross. Every cult. Every false teaching. In some way. <coughs> diminishes the work of Christ. On the cross. And magnifies human ability. I believe that the doctrine. Which Satan is currently working. To erode. In America Christianity. Is the doctrine of sin. If he can convince people. That they are not sinners <laughs> who deserve God's wrath, then they don't need a crucified Savior. If we can convince Christians that they are not an ongoing sinners in daily need repentance and the cleansing blood of Jesus, then they don't need to go deeper in appropriating the message of the cross. Thus, the central truth of the cross is crucial to all sown that chain. I close with this. <laughs> he demonstrated faith with circumstances. Thank you, Jesus. Here are two of the phrases Jesus uttered on the cross. Why have you forsaken me and fallen into your hands? I commit my spirit. How can these two go together? Even at his death, Jesus showed how he trusts the Father beyond circumstances. Jesus predicted his death and resurrection. It's one thing, excuse me, to predict the future. It is quite another thing to go to the cross willingly. At least three times, Jesus shared his destiny with his disciples. They didn't understand more challenging still is the fact that Jesus embraced this destiny by faith. He knew the Father promise of resurrection, but death still lay ahead. So you know, I, I close. He know all this. The Father promise. He know the destiny, but still death lies ahead. Faith over circumstances. Yes. Psalm 46, 1-3. For the rest, can you get ready to give it the scripture, please? Isaiah 53. And we'll stand and close with that. But Psalm 46, 1, 2, 3. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth shall be removed. And though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake. But the swelling thereof. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. Isaiah 53. Who have believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall.
should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as in all faces from him. He was despised and esteemed not. Surely he bore all my griefs, all our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for your sake tonight. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. But we like all we like sheep of gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. We have turned everyone to our own way. But the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is born as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearer. He stops on. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. We're talking about the cross. We are talking about Jesus. Friday, the road to Sunday. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken for you and you and me. And he made his grave with the wicked, good God Almighty. He made his grave with the wicked just because he loves you and me. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet, listen to this, is powerful. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and in the pain of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be steadfast. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear the iniquity of us all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take it down a little bit. Glory Therefore, when I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath Poured out his soul unto death. He went to the cross. He went to the cross. He went to the cross for us. Friday the road to Sunday. This is where he took place. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Come on, stand with me, everybody. Stand with me, everybody. Stand with me, everybody. So Friday, the road to Sunday. Friday is where we begin, sir. For we end up Sunday morning. Where we can shout triumphantly. For he's not in the tomb anymore. Up from the grave, he rose. With a mighty triumph on his head. He arose the picture from the dust of men. Sunday is coming. Where we can rejoice. And we will sing alive. Alive, alive, alive. testify. Let me introduce my Savior as you keep standing. How will I introduce my Savior to the world? Hallelujah. This is how I will introduce him. He's Abraham's sacrifice. Hallelujah. He's a free Hebrew's voice. Hallelujah. Footman walking in the midst of the fire. He's Jeremiah's stairs. He's Isaiah's vision. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. My God is everything to us. He's a fourth man in our life. But this is how I will introduce my savior, I can tell him to the world. Here is a man who was born in an obscure, obscure village. The child of a peasant woman grew up in another village. He worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an ignorant preacher. He never owned a home. He never wrote a book. He never held an, he never held an office. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big city. Never traveled 200 miles from the place he was born. He never did one thing that usually accompanied greatness. 
He had no credentials but himself. Hallelujah. Why is it a young man? The tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friend ran away from him. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through mockery of trial. He was nailed upon the cross between two feet. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his only piece of property that he had on earth, his coat. When he was dead, he was laid in a buried grave through the pity of a friend. Nineteen long centuries have come and gone. And today he is the centerpiece of the human race and a leader of the current process. I am far within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the moving navies that were ever built, all the parliaments that were ever sat, and all the kings that were ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon the earth as powerful as one that one solitary life. He's Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I want to introduce everybody to the altar right now, Friday. The road to Sunday, come quickly, come quickly. If you could rejoice Sunday, you must go through Friday. It's the road to Sunday. It's a road to Sunday. It's a road to Sunday. It's our Savior. Come on, everybody, come on, everybody. Save a right, save. Let's come to this altar and let's close. Hallelujah.